Uh, hi, I'm Skinny Cheeks. Today I want to do a little bit different kind of build video and just go over a couple of sets that I've been really enjoying recently. These are really good as of the Deadlands DLC and should be good for the upcoming Ascending Tide patch as well, barring any PTS changes in the coming weeks. Some of you may have already seen this video from Candy Hands. I'll have it linked down in the description below. He is a really great player, especially at arena content, so make sure to go check him out. But I think this here might be the ultimate dummy cheese combo. He has 30 of the 3 million health dummies set up with one of the Iron Atronach 21 million health trial dummies. After getting some nice pre-buff stacks from the Vampire Skill Simmering Frenzy, he just unloads on the AoEs and, well, I'll just let it play out. It won't take long to melt it. Once those 3 million health dummies respawn, it's pretty much lights out for the Iron Atronach. Just so satisfying to watch it get destroyed like that. So the sets he is using here are Azerblight Reaper from the DLC dungeon, Lair of Marsalok, and then Plague Break, which is a rewards for the worthy set that you can get through PVP or purchase off of a guild trader. So I guess the question is, are these sets actually viable in content as well? And yes, very much so situationally. So the way that Azerblight works is that it puts a debuff on the enemies that stacks up with each dot tick that they receive. Once they hit 20 ticks, they explode, damaging them and all nearby enemies. Since this can apply to all of the enemies in the area, like we saw in Candy's video, this can really set off a chain reaction where there is a ton of damage going out at once. So for single target fights or fights with only a small number of side enemies, this set really won't perform too well. But anything with a good amount of adds that stay up long enough to receive those 20 stacks and explode, this set can really start doing some damage. It does have one other drawback, and that is because it works as a debuff on the enemy, if you have more than one person wearing this, everyone essentially shares the stacks and then only one person is attributed with the explosion when it goes off. So you can get to the explosion quicker with more than one person wearing it but it generally happens so quickly anyways if you're running enough dots and then there is a two second cooldown before the stacks can build up again so you can't just stick this set on the whole group and get really great results you might be able to get away with two people wearing it and it would still perform pretty well though it would be rng which of the two got the final ticks for the explosions so as powerful as the set can be it does have its limitations and is far from the best option as a set it and forget it kind of set that you just use on all encounters Plague Break works a little differently. This set actually puts a dot on the target whenever you deal direct damage. Luckily, this set operates intelligently, and although you can only apply this to one target at a time, each instance of direct damage will prioritize a target that doesn't have the dot applied. So if you are spamming an AoE direct damage ability on a group of mobs, each hit will apply the dot to a new target. This allows it to be run on multiple people as well, though you do run into some of the same kinds of limitations as with Azure light if there are too many applications of the dot and not enough targets. The second function of this set is where it gets really juicy though. If the plague is removed early, it explodes, infecting enemies within 8 meters of the carrier and dealing disease damage. This explosion deals an additional 50% damage per enemy hit. So the more enemies in the area, the higher this damage ticks for. You can see in Candy's parse, it actually had a max tick of 597,000 damage. Obviously you aren't gonna get 30 enemies stacked up like this, but this just shows how it can infinitely scale with as many targets as you can stack up. So originally only the dot portion of this set worked in PVE as the conditions for the second part of the set state that the effect must end early for the explosion to happen. And this meant that only purging the effect would trigger it. However, in the Deadlands patch, they reworked that ending early condition to also include if the target dies. So now if a target dies with this dot on them, they will explode in the same way as if it were purged. And similar to Azerblight, this is a pretty weak set for single target encounters as the dot itself is not really that strong. And if the enemy dies and explodes and no one is around, there's no additional damage. Even with a secondary target or two, it's okay. But once you start getting past that number, it can really start to shine. All right, let's talk about how to set this up. So you can run these two sets together if you want, but keep in mind they are both medium sets. 
So if you're on a stamina build, this is no issue, but for a Magicka setup, you'll probably want to go one or the other most of the time, or if you want to do both together, you'll slot them for a specific burst encounter with Balorg equipped as your monster set. The reason you can get away with this on a Magicka build is because Balorg will fill out your missing penetration from not having the light armor pieces when you cast an ultimate, and if the length of the pull is short enough, you won't have to worry about sustain either from missing those light armor pieces. So here's an example of that on the last pool before the final boss in Veteran Kind's Aegis. This encounter has a lot of strong hitting enemies, so the faster you can burn through it, the better. You can see on the DPS meter that I peaked at over 600k DPS with this combo and finished out at just over 500k before moving on to the final add in front of the entrance to the boss room. And this was using Azur Blight and Plague Break together with the Balorg set and a Fiery Rage Ultimate. So here's another example of the same combo on a smaller pack of adds. This is just the second wave in Kynes Aegis right after you start the trial. Not quite as high, but still well over 300k DPS on a much smaller group of enemies. So really, really nice combo. But if you don't want to swap around gear as much and you are on a Magicka base setup, it's definitely fine to run one or the other. For example, you could do Besides Mania with Azur Blight or Besides Mania with Plague Break or if you don't have Besai, you could do Mother Sorrow with either of those. Any of those combos can still perform really well. Again, this isn't a wear it for everything kind of setup, but can be really strong in certain situations. Here in this clip, I am doing Azur Blight with Basai, and the results are very similar. It doesn't quite peak as high on this pool, but the overall DPS is about in the same range. So these combos can be used in a lot of places. They have a lot of use in dungeons and even four-man arenas like Black Rose Prison, uh, since there's a lot of ad waves that have a lot of enemies, and even some of the boss rounds that have a lot of side enemies mixed in with the bosses. And then like I showed in the clips, also for ad waves and trials too. I think these sets are really fun to run in dungeon runs, even if you don't swap them off for boss rounds, as just exploding all of the trash pools along the way can be super satisfying. All right, let's talk about the specific details of the gear. Really just the same as your usual setups. You'll go all divines on the body pieces, bloodthirsty on the jewelry. You could also do infused on the jewelry. I'm pretty sure Plague Break does not scale up with bloodthirsty, but really the difference in the two traits isn't going to make much difference since most of your other abilities will do better with bloodthirsty. So either way here really works fine. If you're running weapons of one of these sets, you can do precise on any two hand or staff weapon. Plague Break can't crit but there really isn't another trait worth running since Precise is just going to be so good for the rest of your damage. And Azur Blight can crit, so it definitely helps there as well. For dual wield, daggers are going to generally be your best option. You can do Nern Honed and Charged on the traits, or Precise and Charged, or Nern Honed and Precise. Really, any of those combos are going to get you very similar results, and it doesn't really matter too much. I was running Precise Charged in the examples that I showed from Kynes Aegis, because you can buy the Plague Break weapons in those traits, and you don't have to spend any transmutes, but up to you really. So overall, Azur Blight is definitely better suited for classes that have a lot of dots in their kits, like Dragonites or Necromancers, but if no one in your group is running it, you can definitely make good use of it on any class. And then Plague Break is pretty even on every class as well, though Templars do have a pretty cool unique function with it, since their Puncturing Sweep or Biting Jab spammable is four AoE direct damage hits in one second. You can actually apply Plague Break to four enemies in one cast of your spammable, whereas other direct damage AoEs are only going to hit one new target each second that you cast it. Just kind of an interesting little thing here that Templars have access to. All right, and then one more thing I wanted to mention, pairing one of these sets, especially Plague Break with Dark Convergence or Rush of Agony can be really fun too, especially if you're running some dungeons solo or doing a more damage dealing type of tank role for dungeons and are confident enough to not have heavy armor equipped in this specific scenario. You can easily pull in all of the enemies with Dark Convergence or Rush of Agony and then let Plague Break do its thing when they start to die. It's a really fun combo to put together. Overall, lots of really cool options here. But that's pretty much all there is to it. If nothing else, these are really fun sets to just run in the overland zones or to do some daily random dungeons on, but they can be used all the way up to high-end situational trial scenarios as well. Saying they are my favorite sets of the patch doesn't mean that they are the best sets overall for damage across the board, but they have been the ones that I've been having the most fun with. So hopefully you guys that haven't tried these out yet get as much enjoyment out of them as I have been. 
Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you have already used these sets yet and how are you liking them? A big thanks to my current Patreon supporters. If you wanna see how you can help support the channel to keep these guides coming, I'll have a link in the description and there's options for as little as $3. And a special thanks to Nicholas, Simon, Cougarus Bay and the Cougar City Guild, the Order of War Guild, Iffy, Cantankerous Cat, Shady, Bleakwind816, and my wonderful wife. I'll see y'all in the next one. Uh, bye.